ludicrously excited about the fact that I can now title this project I Made Armour in a Cave from a box of scraps. I'm going to be here forever. Although I guess we would have to rename the shed the cave in order to make that strictly accurate. Maybe I should explain about the whole shed thing. Currently, there are two very nice fellas in my kitchen wreaking absolute destruction and then hopefully putting back some nicer things. I'm very excited about this, but also we need to get some work done. So here we are. Given that trifling non-essentials like electricity and water were intermittently going to be turned off, I decided to relegate myself to the garden shed for the duration and actually work on a costume project that I had conceived of in the summer, making leather scale armor for a D&D cosplay. The concept was pretty simple. I think scale armor is pretty. I don't really have the tools or skills or space to work with metal at the moment. Let's make a sort of all-purpose leather adventuring vest for my D&D character Amelia. Hi, I'm Jill Bearup. I'm an actor combatant and also kind of a nerd. Welcome. So to that end, I ordered a large box of leather offcuts from eBay for cheap. Because it seemed a more environmentally friendly option to reuse what was essentially scrap material rather than buying some new fancy vegetable tanned leather and then probably making a hames of it. Did I mention I've never actually worked with leather before? It arrived on a day in which we got more packages than I was expecting. What's inside? We're going to find out. It's not what I want. It's not what I wanted. It's cat food. <laughs> the second large parcel of the day did make me more joyful. Live and learn, I guess. Previous visitors to the channel may recognize Mannequin Skywalker, who still has the stab wounds. And now I've got four kilograms of leather offcuts. Scale armor is generally defined as armor made from small individual scales which are attached to each other and to a cloth or leather backing in overlapping rows. You can make scale armor of varying degrees of effectiveness from just about anything. Leather, metal, pangolin scales, crocodile, I went for leather. The first challenge was the cloth backing because I figured if that fits properly then everything else can't help but fit properly. Right? Hello and welcome to the floor where I have suddenly had an epiphany. This is my fabric bag. And in my fabric bag were the pieces of curtain fabric. Look, I really hated those curtains and they kept getting in my face at night and they came with the house and they probably weren't that clean. That I had previously intended to make into a bodice style top for cosplay because I saw Celinda Nichols wearing one in her D&D lookbook video and I thought, I want one of those. Isn't it great when like, you've done some of your work already. Big fan of that. Where's the back? In here somewhere. I think this is the back. It's two pieces, which I apparently sewed to each other. I mean, I'm sure that seemed like a good idea at the time, but I'm probably gonna have to undo that. So I detached the pieces from each other, ironed down some seams, hemmed them on the sewing machine while the kitchen guys were off getting plumbing supplies, allowing me to sing Disney songs with impunity. Measured me and then the mannequin to figure out how closely we resembled each other. That's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. Okay. And then altered the armholes to try and make it fit a bit better. So the plan is I'm going to take these two pieces. I'm going to pin them on her. I'm going to kind of leave them at the shoulders and the sides. And at the end, we'll come up with two kind of straps at the shoulders to join them up. And then lace them down the sides because technically they should close. They should close. But if they don't, that's okay, we'll work something out. Now ordinarily, under scale armor, obviously you would have some kind of padded layer, but frankly, I'm lazy, and so I might put at most a thick jumper under there, but probably it's gonna be quite warm because there's gonna be quite a lot of leather there, and I don't know what these curtains were made of, but um, I don't think it was any natural material. So probably gonna skip the historically and indeed practically accurate uh, under layer and just try and make it fit. Kinda. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Okay. Then we had a brief interlude in which I tried to figure out which bit was the front because I had not previously labeled them. 50-50 chance it's on the right way around. I think it might be on the right way around. Let's swap it around and see if that's actually better. No, that's worse. Okay. It's right inside. F. B. There we go. I mean, is it perfect? No. But will it work? Hopefully. Now it's time to figure out how we're going to add the scales. The first thing I'm going to do is consult a tutorial that I found on the internet on how to make LARP leather scale armor. So having had a look at the tutorial, it suggests that the easiest way to do things is to cut out strips of scales and then attach the strip to your base tab art. The real question is, what 
sort of stuff have I got in this box of leather? I'm gonna have to remove you from the tripod for this. I am dividing my leather into piles. Uh, this is the brown pile, and on my knee here is the black pile. Black. A lot of black. Shiny black. A little bit sketch. Um, let's make a pile for shiny black. 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 Oh, brown. Having determined that I had much more black leather than brown leather, I went for black. Which also kind of fits in with Amelia's character, who is basically, what if Evie, Circa the Mummy Returns, had magic powers? But could I actually cut the leather? Actually, let's find out. I found this board in my loft. Uh, we're definitely continuing the theme of uh, scraps here. Having traced a scale in purple glitter pen, not the best idea, you still can see the marks on the finished armour, but never mind. I then discovered it could be cut with scissors, but also much more efficiently with a rotary cutter. Yes, we can! I cut a row of scales as a test, and then I had to go do the school run. Well, it's been the weekend, and we are now back in the shed, so if you hear birds singing, or indeed people hammering things, uh, kitchen renovation is ongoing. I used my test scales to make a cardboard template, and then enough stalling had occurred, and since my house was full of dust, and often not full of electricity, there was really nothing to do but get on with cutting out rows and rows of scales, and then punching holes in them. Got my leather punch. I'm trying to recall which is the smallest one. I think it's this one. So we're just gonna punch the smallest hole possible and see what happens. And then having punched two holes at the top of each scale, one on each side, I then stitched them onto the base fabric with string. Look, don't judge me, I was trying to continue my theme of only using stuff that was hanging around my house. Obviously excluding the actual box of leather scraps, because who has four kilos of leather scraps hanging around their house? Maybe you do, I don't know. For the sake of everyone's sanity, we will skate lightly over how long this took. I'm going to be here forever. Forever. Which was, as you can see, a couple of days. But I did a lot, and I mean a lot, of cutting rows of scales until I got bored, and then punching holes until I got bored, and then repeating, because I think if I'd had to cut out the 300 or so scales before I started, I might have gone mad. You know? This isn't looking bad. When I got up to the waist, I had to cut the rows of scales up into smaller sections so that they overlapped properly. More like actual scale armour, I suppose. And that seemed to work pretty well. It took two days to finish the bulk of it, but I did put the same t-shirt on because, first of all, the washing machine was not working at the time, and second of all, the t-shirt was covered in lots of little pieces of leather, so I thought, if I have to go out, I'll just change. We're doing pretty well. We've got almost all of this done. I need a couple of extra ones for there, and then I need to figure out what I do at the top. Probably gonna make a bunch of individual scales. Gonna cut them out until I lose the will to live again, but I mean, it's looking great. I just hope it fits. <laughs> It'll be fine. Totally fine. And that's pretty much what I did. When it came to the top, I kind of folded the scales over and then sewed them onto the back and the front of the fabric base, and that seemed to work okay. Having got basically all the scales on, I decided to tidy up a bit and to try and hide all of the string which mostly worked. Sometimes it's easier to sew things on when they're inside out, by the way. And the nice thing about the white string, grey fabric and black scales is that it's easier for you to see what's going on, which is totally why I did it, and not because I'm cheap or environmentally conscious, depending on how uh, charitable you're feeling. To attach the shoulders together, I sewed the fabric together at the top, and then having checked it fit alright, basically decided to wrap the existing scales in a tube of leather, and then punch holes through everything and tie it with a strip of leather that I cut from the offcuts. Again, it worked remarkably well, and it even looks quite nice, I think. And then it was school pickup time, so we resumed the next day. You may have many questions at this point. Jill, why are you dressed like a hobbit bartender? Jill, why do you look so tired? Jill, what even is the plan today? And those are all good questions, and I will be answering some of them. This is the plan for today. This is my thickest piece of leather. I'm going to turn it into four equally sized strips, and I'm going to attach one piece to each side of the front of the armor, and one piece to each side of the back, and punch holes in them so that they can be laced together. I had a really clever thought yesterday, which I will explain because Hobbit bartender Jill was extremely tired and so not 
terribly coherent. Sorry, Annie. The thought was, if I attach the other side of the shoulders with the same method I used for the first side, then I can just put the thing over my head with minimal faffing. And then if the leather lacings on one side are sort of semi-permanently done up, but the leather lacings on the other side are actually just hiding cunningly concealed command strips, then I can take it on and off really easily. Which is always helpful with cosplay. It's like Velcro, but it's not Velcro. Poor Hobbit bartender Jill. But that's exactly what I did. I took my extremely thick piece of leather, I punched big holes in the sides that would have the lacing, I punched little holes in the side that I wanted to sew to the fabric, and I sewed them on. The lacing I used to tie them together, incidentally, was a leather lace that I had bought for a Princess Leia hair tutorial. I then cut out a rectangle of leather to make my shoulder tube on the right hand side and closed the right shoulder in the same manner as the left. Though I'd advise not doing it while it's on the mannequin. I, I tried. That being done, I had to go and see a man about a bike repair, and then I had to figure out how the command strips were going to work. Question is, how do we attach them so that they won't fall off the fabric? The solution I came up with was get a long rectangle of thin leather and sew it to the front piece for later sticking, sew the thick back strip on as usual, lace the thick pieces together so they look nice, and then... Hoping that this and this can just stick together with the little command strips, is that the one? Let's have a go. I had a go. Oh no. No, these are not sticking at all, are they? Clearly, the solution is stronger glue. So I went into my house and I thought, I know there's super glue in here somewhere, and then I thought, why don't I just ask these nice guys who are here renovating my kitchen if they have any strong glue? Yeah, they do. As it turns out, yes, using extremely strong skin bonding two-part glue did in fact mean that everything stayed where it needed to. Ah, it's stuck with my glasses. <laughs> Hooray, it worked! <laughs> Tidy up time. Tidy up time basically involved sewing or PVA gluing individual scales to places that looked like they could use it. After which I had to actually tidy up all of the mess that I'd made, and then it was time to get my glad rags on. But not before texting all of my friends to show them what I had made, because if it had taken you four days in a shed to make something, you'd probably send pictures to everyone you knew as well. May I present Amelia, Rogue, Warlock, variant human. That Evie from The Mummy but with magic powers kind of concept is why she wears a lot of black, why she has a lot of ranks in knowledge history, and why she has a lot of points in investigation as well. The reason she has levels in Rogue and in Warlock is basically because I had not played D&D for so long, I had no idea what was going on, so I just told my friend James the character concept and went, what do you think? As it turns out, she is a lot of fun to play. And as it turns out, she's really fun to cosplay because she just wears a lot of black. And now, of course, her beautiful, amazing, wonderful black scale armor vest. I am so pleased with how it turned out. Honestly, every time I do one of these making projects, I'm like, never again, never again. Why is this so hard? But then I look at the end product and go, well, maybe next time I could just try something slightly less ambitious. Honestly, I, I wonder at the end of every project, should there be a next time? But we'll see. I mean, according to her character sheet, she has leather armor, so she could definitely use more leather armor. I definitely think she could use a bracer because she uses a short bow, maybe a sort of fingerless glove type arrangement. Surely that would take less time? I keep looking at armor sets on Pinterest and they're giving me terrible ideas. Let me know what you think a rogue slash warlock needs in her arsenal when Misty stepping away from trouble just isn't going to cut it, and I'll see you next time.